Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning again. Welcome again to another edition of Inspirational Wednesdays. Today is October the 1st, 2014. This is a day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing. We are glad in it. God has blessed you to see another day. God has put your name on the on the highly favorite list to allow you to wake up, to allow you to be in the land of the living, to allow you to be here instead of being dead, buried, and in the grave. We have a lot to celebrate, God, just for the fact that we're still here. Yes, I know that you're going through something. Yes, I know that you're dealing with something. Yes, I know that something's weighing down on your heart. Yes, I know something's got you in the funk. Yes, I know something's trying to hold you back. Yes, I know that you're dealing with all of these things. But the truth is, if these things were destined to hurt you, to destroy you, to kill you, you wouldn't be here right now. Our God would have given you over to that. But for the simple fact that our God has kept you in spite of those things. Our God has loved us in spite of those things. Our God has enabled us to be here this morning on this call in spite of those things proves that our God is an awesome God. Our God is a wonderful God. Our God is totally, completely, and abundantly a marvelous God. And so we're going to celebrate him this morning as we go to him uh, in prayer, praise, and devotion. We're going to show the world that we lean not to our own understanding, but we depend on him at every step in our lives as we seek him in prayer, as we seek his counsel, as we seek his guidance, as we seek his direction, as we seek his discipline, as we seek his in, in, uh, reinvigoration, as we seek his restoration, as we seek him, we're going to show the, the world that we depend on a power higher than us. Amen. Amen. My name's Pastor Al. And it's my privilege, it's my pleasure, it's my honor to be able to facilitate this call with you this morning. We believe by faith that everything we pray about is not uh, wasted breath, is not wasted time. We believe that as we pray, our God will move in, 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 in mighty and miraculous ways to do that only that which he can do in our lives. So we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to get right into our call this morning. We're going to begin with our opening morning prayer. Then we're going to go right into our devotional, and then we're going to get to what I call the best part of this call, the prayer session is called, where we get to hear from you. We get to receive your prayer, prayer requests, your praise reports, and your prayers. So with that said, let's buckle up. Let's go. Uh, let, let's, let's get this call started. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we're here today right now, God, because God, we know there's no place else that we can go, no place else that we can be where God you are. Everywhere you are is where we want to be. Every, every time you turn around, we want to be in your presence, God. And so with that said, said, God, we are coming before you this morning to get, to submit our prayer request to you, God. We're coming this morning to worship you, to praise you, our praise reports, God, and we're coming to you right now, God, to acknowledge how much we depend upon you by the prayers we send to you, God. There are a lot of things that are in our lives. There are a lot of things that we're wrestling with. There's a lot of things that are going on, God, but we know that regardless of how chaotic things are, regardless of how uh, 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 stressful things are, God, we know Know that we can depend on you to straighten things out, to, to establish order where there was none, and to, and to create purpose in the midst of purposelessness. So God, do what only you can do during this call this morning. Bless us, God. Give us the, 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 the strength, the courage, and the bravery needed to raise our prayer request. God, let us know that we have not because we ask not. The doors never open because we never knock. We never receive because we never seek. So God, change that this morning. Allow us to be able to not be able to ask, be able to seek, so that, God, you may be able to do what it is you need to do in our lives. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. The scriptorial focus for our devotional this morning comes from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, the 10th through 14th verses. That's Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 10 through 14. I will read from the New International Version of the scripture. The word of God is as follows. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. 
For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will br bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and you will and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Thus far, the word of God. The title for this morning's devotional is This Won't Last Forever. This Won't Last Forever. No matter how many times someone shares with us that what we're currently experiencing isn't God punishing us, the truth is that there are some times when our Lord is forced to discipline us. Any parent worth his or her weight in gold, platinum, and diamonds understands that there are times when we must discipline our children. We may not want to do it, and yes, it does hurt us parents more than it hurts them. But Part of raising children requires us to tighten them up when they step out of line. Just as disciplining occurs in the natural, it also occurs within the spiritual realm as well. Regardless of who we are and where we find ourselves in life, each of us has gone so far astray that our God has had to straighten us out. We've been just as grown as we wanted to be and we've done everything we felt we should. The whole time we've dis disregarded the reality that many of the things we've, we just have done and engaged in were top 10 sins in the eyesight of the Lord. The only way to divorce us from the pleasurable trappings of our sins was to forcefully tear us away from them. Many times this objective required a strong hand, and it was only after we were forced to deal with the divine repercussions of our sins that we were able to return to the straight and narrow. I don't know what any of us are going through, and if I did have some idea of the ordeals we're currently facing, the truth is that my knowledge is only peripheral. It only scratches the surface. It doesn't dig deep into the predicaments that now confront us. But let's call a spade a spade and acknowledge the truth. Many of us are catching hell. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We're trapped within some precarious situations. Yes, we're right. The Lord God is literally whooping our hind parts. And the one thing I've noticed among all who are catching hell is the prevailing belief that there is no readily apparent end to it. What we're now experiencing is what, we, what we're always going to experience. Where we are right this instant is the sum total of our lives. But this morning, our God declares that, that such isn't so. This, whatever it is in our lives, won't last forever. What we're going through, what we're currently experiencing, what we're presently fighting against, what we're struggling with right this very moment won't always be our lots in life. Our God literally promises us that there are better days ahead for us. In Jeremiah 29, we're given the chance to read the letter that the prophet wrote to those Israelites that were exiled in Babylon. He was in Jerusalem with a remnant of, the, of Israelites that had, had escaped captivity. God gave Jeremiah a word to share with his people, forced to live in a foreign land subjected to the power and might of an imperial nation. The exiled Israelites believed that Yahweh had broken his express promise in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verses 6 and 8. They were convinced that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had left them, that he had forsaken them. This belief left God's people defeated mentally and despondent spiritually. To address this issue, the Lord had Jeremiah pen a letter to his exiled brothers and sisters. Its purpose was to encourage them that their exile, i.e. their punishment for sinning against Yahweh, wouldn't last forever. This morning, the Lord God Almighty uses that same letter to encourage us. Yes, we, we have sinned and have all fallen short of the glory of God. Yes, all of our righteousness is but filthy rags. Yes, all of us are like sheep who have gone astray. And yes, we're dealing with, what we're dealing with is the crop of the sins we've committed. But the good news for us is that the Lord's punishment is temporary, but his love endures forever. 
Verse 10 indicates that the Israelites' exile in Babylon would only last 70 years. Yes, 70 years is a long time to us, but to God, the same time period isn't even a drop in the bucket. Psalm 90 verse 4 informs us that a thousand years are just a day to the Lord. Exodus chapter 20 verse 5 also informs us that when the Lord does impose divine punishment, it only lasts to the third and fourth generations. However, that same scripture reveals that the love of our God lasts for a thousand generations. How many of us can envision what a thousand generations look like? Who can reduce this figure to one manageable and tangible image? I know I can't. So this, whatever it is, is temporary. We must walk away from this edition of Inspirational Wednesdays, knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that our God is absolutely faithful to his promise. Never has he left us, neither has he ever forsaken us, and he doesn't plan on doing it now. No matter how dark the path ahead becomes, no matter how difficult life living becomes, no matter how much fear surrounds us on our right side and despair rises up on our left side, our God will always be with us even to the end of all time. Not only that, but it's our God's extremely explicit desire to bless us. He really wants to show us abounding favor. It's never the intention of any good parent to be mean and cruel to his or her children. No, every good parent dreams about giving their children those things that would most make them happy. It's the Lord's intention to, excuse me, to give us the desires of our hearts. Our punishments get in the way of this happening in our lives. Therefore, the easiest thing for God to do is to lift our punishments. And Jeremiah's letter is God's stated intention to do that very thing in each of our lives in short order. One of the things I love about this letter is God's promise to always make himself available to us as long as we always seek him honestly and faithfully. Notice what our Lord is teaching us. His desire is that we turn away from sin. And as an incentive to ensure that this occurs, he guarantees that everyone that lives pursuant to his will and his commandments will have open access to him. As long as we live holy as he requires, we will remain co continually connected to him and him to us. Therefore, the very promise of relationship that the Lord makes to us is itself our motivation to turn away from sin and towards him. Last but not least, God promises us in Jeremiah's letter that he will restore us. He will take principal responsibility for rebuilding us. He will personally renew bonds broken and relationships lost. He will reestablish and refocus our commitment to Christian discipleship and stewardship. He will reinvigorate our enthusiasm to be the peculiar people that he's called us to be. Our Lord will do what he has to do and perform every action necessary to reinstate us spiritually. He will reestablish the love relationships between him and us. You see, our ordeals were never meant to hurt us. They were never intended to cause us permanent harm. Instead, they're meant to repurpose us. They're intended to reposition us so that we're again walking in the paths that the Lord God has ordained for us. Therefore, don't worry. This won't last forever. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, it's because of love that you discipline us. You're correcting our sinful ways. You're putting us back on the path that leads to righteousness and spiritual purpose. Our trials and tribulations are very unpleasant. They're painful and stressful. But the truth is that in some instances, they're the direct result of our willful disobedience. Help us to understand that this is only temporary, that you have so much better plan for us. Get our minds right so that we can serve you purposefully, productively, and proficiently. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. We have just had our morning devotional. It's our prayer. It's our hope. It's our desire that as we have received this devotional, God has spoken to us. I know that this morning's devotional was a little tough on us because typically we don't want to hear about how we've fallen short. We don't want to hear about what we've done wrong. We want everything to be love, love. We want everything to be on the up and up. We want everything to be positive. But the truth is, especially when we read uh, uh, the Bible, 
Bible. And the truth is that many of the things we deal with are our crop, not our crosses. And I want to thank Bishop Alexander for preaching this years ago. And it has always stuck with me that many of the things we deal with are our crop, not our our, our crosses, that they are the direct result of us making certain decisions, committing certain actions, and these are these are the product, these are the consequences of it. And even though our God loves us, our God still requires us to deal with the choices we've made. Every one of us has made great choices, and every one of us has made terrible, horrendous choices. Trust me, I'm the king of horrendous, terrible choices. If you can mess something up. I have messed it up eight ways since Sunday, so I know uh, where you are. I know what you're dealing with. I know what you, how, how you're feeling right now. But the truth is, and the testimony that I have to give to you, is in spite of me screwing it up, and trust me, I have screwed it up. My God, our God, has come in. He has dealt with my screw-ups. He has dealt with my shortcomings. And he has still enabled his will to be realized in, in my life. So I share that with you, that if you're going through something, and if you believe, if you can see that what you're dealing with is your crop, don't fret, don't worry that our God is so awesome, so marvelous, so magnificent, so mighty, that he's able to take your crop and turn it into something that develops your witness, your testimony, your praise, your glory, your glorification of him. He is able to take what was what was meant for our harm and turn around and use it for our good. And what all we have to do is to, be, is to humble ourselves, to seek him, to seek his forgiveness, to repent for what we've done. And you'll be amazed what God is, is doing. Now, please let me before I end this, let me say this. I'm not saying that everything you're dealing with is 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 your is your fault. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying sometimes some things are your fault. And what I am addressing, what I feel God leading me to address is that many times we walk around with the arrogant belief that nothing is our fault, that everything that's happening is because something external to us, it wants to hinder us, wants to hurt us, wants to, wants to harm us. That's not true. The word is replete with examples of folks falling short and God having to come to rescue folks because of their own sins. And so that's what God is dealing with this morning. For those of us who are going through some things where we can't figure out who it is that's affecting us. We can't see any external influence. We can't see any external uh, 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 burdens or predicaments. If we can't find an external factor to what we're dealing with, God says nine times out of ten, the the, the factor is etern internal, not external. And he said he just wants us to know that so that when we are praying to him, when we are seeking his face, that he, that we will uh, invite him to do what he needs to do so that we can turn things around. And that happens when he comes in and he turns some things around in our lives. Amen? Amen. It is time to pray. I am excited about praying. I'm excited about, about seeking God's face. I'm excited about uh, inviting the Lord into our lives because I know that once we seek his face, once we pray to him, once we invite him into our lives, our lives are never the, never the same. You know, that when God comes in and does what he does, it changes us. Now, it may not change us 100%, but it may change us 25%. A 25% change is, is a substantial change in anyone's life. And our God says that we are a work in progress and that every time he does something, it is changing us into into persons that look like, sound like, walk like, talk like, and just act like his son, Christ Jesus. So I just believe that as we are lifting our prayers this morning. God is using our prayer requests, our praise reports, and our prayers to literally change us from who we are to whom he wants us to be. So here's the thing. We're going to jump right in this morning. We're going to begin our prayer session. We want you to take advantage of our prayer section here, okay? And let me share this with you. And then please, before I share it, don't think I'm, I'm patting myself on the back. I'm not. I have literally watched persons pray during our calls, 
and then come back in seven days and give us praise reports for the very things we've been praying about. Now, it's not because we necessarily prayed about it. It's because of the God we prayed to was so faithful to answer uh, the prayer requests and the prayers raised during this call. But it, well, I'm giving that to you as proof that our God is here. Our God is receptive. Our God is attentive to what we're raising in prayer. And you, and you have an exclusive open invitation to share with God what it is that you want for him to pray with, uh, to work with you, to work on, to work on your behalf, to do for you through this call. You have your two or more gathered and the word says with two or more together, there shall he also be. And so we want you again to take advantage of this call. Just give us your name, where you're calling from, and we'll go from there. If you're afraid that someone may recognize who you are, just give us where you're calling from. We'll go from there. So with that said, we're we're opening up the floor. Give If you have a prayer request, praise report, or a prayer, we want you to give us your name and where you're calling from.